Hello and welcome to another episode of the Socialistics Podcast, Social Media Agency Stories. My name is Jason Yormark. Uh, I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, I have this uncanny ability to apparently schedule guests around things that actually uh, relate to what I am personally going through with my agency. So I feel like this will be a very natural conversation. But uh, I want to welcome Elias Zepeda, founder and CEO of Need Clients Now. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Jason. Looking forward to this. Awesome. Well, why don't let's just jump right in. Uh, I always want to have everybody just kind of give us your background. What's your story? Where'd you start? Where have you been? And, and where are you at? Awesome. Happy to do so. Uh, I started the uh, my marketing agency at a very young age. I was 21 years old when I started uh, marketing. And initially, uh, the first five years of running the business, we were primarily a uh, experiential marketing agency. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were producing events. I was hiring uh, training and staffing brand ambassadors. We were creating experiences and that type of stuff. And that was great. I have a huge passion for events and I will always be involved in events in some capacity. But, uh, you know, over the years, people would ask me, you know, do you do you do online marketing and do you do Google advertising? Do you do, you know, social media advertising? And, you know, we were initially always just an experiential agency, but I couldn't get away from it. It it was it was. At, at that time, social media was was starting to become rampant and a lot more common and online and local advertising. And I realized what we did as an experiential agency, it's amazing and it serves its purpose. But when it when it comes to delivering more value and making a difference in a business, really online marketing is is absolutely and extremely powerful. So we couldn't get away from from online and we slowly transition into uh, and to really focusing on online marketing and specifically focusing on building sales funnels. And, um, and that's how we transition in year five of the agency. Now we're in year 11. And so for the past six years, we've been really focusing on lead generation, on, on providing done for you funnel services and all everything that encompasses what a sales funnel is, which there's a lot of moving pieces to that. Uh, and so, you know, throughout the years, I've built a team that successfully uh, produces high converting sales funnels across a handful of industries. And that's what and that's that's where we're at now. Gotcha. Awesome. So uh, that's interesting to me. So I I was a little late um, as, as far as starting an agency, a late bloomer. Um, but it's, so it's interesting to me when I run into folks that actually started at a relatively young age. So you had mentioned, you know, you started an agency at 22. Tell me a little bit about. What, uh, why, how, how come you didn't go down a traditional, you know, corporate path uh, and, and jumped into entrepreneurship at a relatively early age? Absolutely. So to be honest, it, it was an opportunity. I didn't plan on it. So my father is an entrepreneur. So, so I, I did, you know, uh, uh, you know, learn a lot from, from my father and, and, and seeing him run his business. But it wasn't really my intention. Let me start a marketing agency. It didn't really work out that way. So, you know, to make a long story short, I I um, I worked for the family business when I was you know 18, 19, 20 years old, and then at that time, um, the we we had the 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 market crash and the real estate industry. This is back in 2000, 2008, and uh, I needed to to do something else. I needed to get away from the family business. Uh, and so I got hired as a manager for a marketing company and I worked for that marketing company for about eight months and that marketing company, what they did is they did direct sales and did new- newspaper marketing, which meant that they would participate, uh, in having sales representatives at football, at baseball, at basketball, at events all across, all across the, you know, the city and the area. And my responsibility was to hire train and manage sales representatives at these at these activations at these special events so i did that for for eight nine months and i was pretty pleased with it but i realized that i was more ambitious than my boss i I realized i had bigger goals than my boss and you know and you know to make a long story short the client which is a you know a, a contractor the person who who oversees circulation and vendors for the newspaper organization the client knew that I was being held back and he at a meeting said, Hey, you know what this, your boss, 
is holding you back, I would be more than happy to give you your own territory and your own contract. But in doing so, you would need to to have a business. You need to have an incorporated business. You need to sign up as a new vendor. And so that's that's kind of the genesis of of my entrepreneur uh, story. Is it was it was offered to me by a client, and I I'm fortunate and thankful. And so at that time, it was a really scary decision because I was 21 at the time. I was you know very young and. Mm -hmm and fairly inexperienced and and I decided to to jump into it and the rest is history. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. I uh you know, that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about this podcast and a lot of the content we create is, you know, helping you know, younger folks, you know, be able to take that leap um and, and hopefully not make uh the same mistakes that I have uh along the way. So, but I think what's really interesting to me that I kind of really wanted to dive in with you today is around basically you know, sales funnels and the importance of, you know, building sales funnels, marketing automation, you know, how to be more effective with your sales process, especially as an agency. I think that for, you know, we've been, I've been fortunate to have a little bit of a runway to kind of figure out a lot of this through trial and error. And while we've reached a point where we have a, a good flow of inbound opportunities, we realize that if we really want to get to where we want to go, we need to create more in essence, funnels. We need we need to create more opportunities to connect with um, more people, uh, even if they're not ready to necessarily buy from us today. So we're in the beginning, in the, kind of the middle stages of kind of figuring that out. What does that look like for a social media agency, and what are, what kind of value can we provide, uh, and how can we connect with opportunities that maybe aren't ready to buy now, but maybe they are three, six, twelve months down the road, and and really kind of nurture those relationships. So. Let's start with just telling me a little bit about, you know, the important, like most of our listeners probably know what a funnel is, but just an overview of what, you know, what does that look like to you and, and how do you start thinking about creating that for your business? Absolutely. I mean, funnel is one of those, you know, it's one of the buzzwords of the, yeah. you know, of the past four or five years, but really what it is, is, is a strategy and it's the path to conversion and it's the customer journey. Right. And so there are many different types of quote unquote funnels, uh, you know, and you nailed it, you know, for an agency, it's about demonstrating your expertise. It's about providing value. It's about indoctrinating your prospects. Right. And that's kind of what it comes down to. And so there are many funnels that I would recommend for agency owners like yourself and mm -hmm. funnels that we produce on a on a and manage on a day to day basis. But going within the, the the lines of providing value and demonstrating our knowledge and expertise and providing as much value as possible. Um, you know, webinar, a webinar campaign is, is certainly one of the most effective ones. And that's something that we do day in and day out. Last night, we had two webinars running across the country in different states. Uh, and that's that's a great strategy for certain businesses and specifically agencies because you have, you have an hour, you have 45 minutes, you have an hour and a half to really dig deep into into the pain points into uh, really demonstrating your expertise, establishing your credibility, telling your story, right? And then if you have an offer in place, then you have an opportunity to showcase and present your irresistible offer. Or it can just be the type of funnel where you're delivering value and then the offer will come in at a later date, depending on on who the audience is and depending how you want to approach that. But webinar is really effective and that funnel can work for many different industries, many different services, of course. So it's not going to work like if you're selling a, you know, a T-shirt, if you're sure. selling like an e-commerce right. product, it doesn't make sense. Right. And so mm -hmm. it has to be a service. Uh, that ideally is in the thousands of dollars, right? Sure. It's not going to be, you know, a thirty, fifty thousand dollars super high ticket, you know, uh, a product, but it's not going to be, you know, a, a T-shirt or a fifty dollar e-commerce product. So that that really fine line of a service uh, that's in the thousands of dollars, and where you have that opportunity to to really share your story and um, and share the expertise and the value. And then uh, spend really an hour, an hour time with with your prospect, and so mm -hmm. that's an amazing funnel, and that's one that works really well for this industry, especially industries like agencies where you have the ability and the viability to continue uh, um, having recurring payments, you know, monthly retainers, and so it's it's a great a great uh, you know top funnel starter funnel for agencies. So where do, what is it when if, a, if an agency is kind of not doing these things, where, where, where does that start? Like, what do they need to be thinking about, and how do you 
you know, what are the, how do you kind of ensure that you can be successful with it? Uh, like what are the questions that you need to ask yourself? What are the, where's the time that you have to put in to kind of prepare yourself to be, uh, even in a position to facilitate a successful funnel strategy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the truth is webinar funnels or, or a fully integrated webinar campaign is labor intensive, mm -hmm. right? So now we have a full team that does it, designers, developers, someone that's mapping out the specific funnel steps and someone that's doing the tech, right? But there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of variables in this specific funnel. Uh, and so one of the mistakes I made in the first six years of running my company is uh, is, is I was working with so many different industries, right? I, I was I was really working with lots of companies. If, if I had a referral and it was something I knew very little about, I would take it. I would take it. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I've made. And if I can help someone avoid that mistake and focus on one or two niches, that's one of the biggest advices I, yeah. I can give, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because when you focus on a niche, you know so much about that audience and you know the pain points, you know the challenges, you know their fears. You, you just know so much about it and it becomes so much easier to systematize and, and, to, and to grow and scale. Um, so back to the webinar, uh, this has to be a topic and an industry, a vertical that you're very familiar with. And, and that's really how, how it works. You have to advertise unless you already have an email list that you're going to be emailing and inviting them to. So it comes down to the, what's the traffic source. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our customers, they have a list, but they want new people to, you know, to, to be at the top of funnel. They want new people to, to register and attend the webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really kind of where it starts. You have to, you have, to have a, you know, an invitation. People have to visit your registration page. And you have to have a compelling headline that says the title of the webinar and the benefits and what they're going to get and how they register and all that fun stuff. And so that's kind of where it starts in, in getting, getting registration. Got it. Um, I, I found, I think for most agencies, um, realistically, and, and we've learned this through trial and error, that in order to really pull off that sort of thing, oftentimes you're not going to be able to do all of it yourself. I mean, you're busy with enough running the agency. So the, the realistically, you know, bringing in another agency or, or someone to help kind of navigate um, helping develop that, run it, uh, play a part in it to ensure that there's um, consistent movement with it. But aside from, you know, getting help, what are some of the tools or, um, or resources out there that an agency owner or aspiring, aspiring agency owner could um, tap into to kind of help them get the ball rolling? Yeah. So, like I said, webinar campaigns are labor intensive and there's so many moving pieces that are a part of it. And so, uh, you know, let's focus on, on, on one of them, you know, so, so we have a registrants, we have enough people that are registering. Let's say we have 200 people that were registering from, let's say, hypothetically, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram ads, right? So that's our first, that's the first KPI that you want to focus on is people as registrants, mm -hmm. right? The second KPI is number of people that actually end up showing up to the webinar, and that's important. And to have that, you need to have systems in place. You need to have tools and softwares to use so that you're sending reminder campaigns. And so that's where the automation comes into play here. Right. And so what we do for webinar campaigns is we send email reminders, various email reminders, right? Because people forget. Okay. And, you know, if you register for something last week, you know, it's, it's, it can very well happen that you forgot you registered. And so having these automated reminders are very vital, but it doesn't just stop with email. We also like to send ringless voicemails as well. Right, because that's just a different touch point, right? And I love ringless voicemails; they're cool, they're fun, right? It's a voicemail that you that you suddenly get your phone probably did not ring, but you get mm -hmm. a voicemail, and that voicemail says, "Hey, this is Jason, yeah. and I just wanted to send you a quick reminder that we have a webinar this evening, and I'm going to be sharing with you X, Y, Z." Right? So these yeah. are fun, short little messages. So that's a second touch point, and then of course, uh, the bell of the ball: text message marketing, right? So text messages. Uh, are extremely effective, yeah. right? And so these are just short messages saying, hey, Jason here, uh, you know, our webinar is gonna be starting this evening at six, really looking forward to seeing you there, you know, and then there's typically some type of URL that either connects them to register or, or has them visit a link or, you know, whatever the use case is. And so yeah. that's a second KPI using technology, using these automation tools mm -hmm. so that you have an omni-channel 
uh, kind of approach to getting as many people to actually attend. Because what's the point if you have a lot of reg registrants, but no one's really showing up, then it's a, whole, a giant waste of money. So second KPI is number of people that show up. Uh, we just had a webinar um, earlier this month where we had our highest our highest show up rate and it was like 73 percent and i've never seen anything that high uh uh you know then like i said yesterday we had two webinars and they were in the 40 percent which are really good and that's again because we're focusing on on sending emails text messages and ringless voicemails interesting i didn't even think about the ringless voicemails that's very interesting i've always wondered when i've gotten voice i've gotten voicemails every once in a while and i'm like i don't remember the phone ringing <laughs> um, so that's I, I mean, that doesn't surprise me that 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 exists, but that's a very uh, that's an interesting tactic I hadn't even thought about. I, I would imagine yeah. that the thought there is there's some automation there in the sense of the message that's le I mean, I, I guess tell me like with, how does ringless voicemail work? Is it you record one message and that it shoots it out to everybody? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You record it. You, it's a you know MP. Uh, MP3 file, mm -hmm. and then you upload it to the tool, and then it does its thing, and then you have the numbers, the phone numbers stored already in the database, right? And that's as simple as that. And then mm -hmm. it has analytics; it'll show you how many were delivered, oh, wow. how many were not delivered. And then the best part, it's it's very inexpensive. Like, yeah. like I, I'm I'm talking, I don't have the exact number price memorized, but it's like an average client for like a local campaign is going to be spending less than like $30 to run a ringless oh, wow. voicemail campaign to hundreds of people. So it's very inexpensive. And again, mm. uh, you know, uh, the bell of the balls text messages, but ringless voicemails work really well because people are curious, like who sent me a voicemail? Because yeah. lots of people don't even send voicemails anymore. So right. it's it's really interesting and it's very effective. And that's why we're able to command, you know, these 40% like show up rates yeah. for our campaigns. Well, that's awesome. So the automation piece is really interesting to me. I've, that, that's something that I haven't done a good enough job with i think for us i've always you know we we tried some cold email outreach and it's just never been really that effective and I'm, I, there's only so much time in the day that i have to work with and I've, I've reached a point with our agency that i have enough inbound opportunities that that takes up the majority of my time that doesn't mean that we need to be doing more i'm you know we I, i'm pulling in you know i'm growing our sales team and so we we know that we have to do more uh for the longer funnel uh opportunities but uh, and, and I, I'm learning a lot about automation and where that makes sense. You know, where where does automation start and stop and where does that custom personalized one to one um, kind of take over? So I'm interested in from your per perspective, um, you know, with, for again, an agency owner that's looking to kind of get this going in their world. Um, what can't I mean, I think that I think the better question here is. What can't be automated? You know, what, what, you know, if you're, even if you're kind of putting these funnels in place and you're putting the automation that you can in place, what can, what does an agency owner still need to expect in terms of they're still having to do non automated? Like, what's the time commitment? Like, what are the things that they're going to still have to do, even if they have an ideal automated system in place? Gosh. Yeah. That's a, that's a loaded question there, Jason. <laughs> that's, it, it's a tough one because automation is amazing. It, it gives us and grants us the opportunity to save time, right? So like in these webinar campaigns, we're automating the emails, the reminder emails, we're automating, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the reminder sequences. And then for those that did not even attend the webinar, right, the other 60, 70% using the webinar funnel as an example, we're automating, we're sending them the replay mm -hmm. of the webinar. So, so, and then we're sending, or automating other emails for those that did watch it but did not take action to whatever the offer was. We're automating, like, hey, it looks like you didn't take advantage of our offer. You know, let us know why not. You know, or schedule a call with a representative, right? Depending on what the offer is. So there's automation that's involved heavily in these funnels and in, and in these types of campaigns. Uh, I see sometimes where automation, you know, really does not work, and 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 that's where. You know, you sneakily try to make it sound like it's personal, but it's not, you know, but it's not like that. You don't want to do that. Like, you don't want to do that. It's, it's, I, I don't suggest it, mm -hmm. right? People are not going to mind reminders. People are not going to remind, you know, invitations like that. And they're not going to care whether they're automated or not. But when it comes down to depending on the product or service that you're selling, you still have to have some involvement. And so I, I don't suggest 
uh, unless you have a very small price point, I don't suggest automating the actual sales conversation. You right. want to speak to your customers, right? You, you want to ask them questions and you want to be able to, you know, to really uh, have your sales team deliver and, uh, you know, have that that one on one communication with them. So there are lots of ways to use automation and reminders and follow ups and invitations and so forth. And obviously in, in email, email marketing, of course. Uh, but yeah, I really think that that you have to be strategic with it so that you don't so that you don't miss the mark and really having that that personal communication with your prospects. Sure. So um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to so I, I think I'm good on sales calls. Of course, I'm sure I could be a lot better. But, uh, you know, one of the questions, one, one of your talking points that jumped out to me that I wanted to ask, because I want to see if I can learn something today or at least give the audience something uh, to think about is. Um, you know, how to, how, how to be more effective with sales calls, right? Once you get the opportunity, right? Once you get them on the, on the phone and you have that opportunity, what are, uh, you know, what are some of the things that you recommend, um, agency owners or, or salespeople at agencies or, or really anybody that's doing a sales call? What, what, what are some, what are the top two or three things that kind of jump top of mind around how to really make the best use of those opportunities? So, I mean, it depends on, on, you know, the history of this person. It depends on, on, is this inbound? Is this outbound? So there's lots of things to really consider here. You know, sure. what, what's really worked for us. And again, it focuses on knowing so much about a niche, about an industry, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, one of the, the verticals that we uh, are working with heavily across the country is beauty academies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these are, these are uh, institutions that are certifying you know, future beauty business owners, right? So that's that's a, a niche that we're specializing in and that we've worked with for, for years now. Mm -hmm. And so we have so much knowledge on it. So as soon as I get on the phone and I've been doing sales and business development for, you know, since I started the company, so I'm quite comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of factors that come into play. One is passion. Uh, you know, people need to see that whoever's doing the sales, whether it's a CEO or a sales professional is passionate about the work that they do and the results that they deliver. And so that's a really big one. And when I when I started, since I started the company at such a young age, I didn't have that much experience, but people saw the passion through me and they saw the enthusiasm. They probably saw I was gonna work my tail off and they gave me opportunities. I look back at some of these proposals that I won, you know, eight, nine years ago, and I'm like, I cannot believe anybody would hire us yeah. with these types of proposals, right? So maybe the same for you, you look back at how much you guys grown and improved and new things you guys added. And so that's a big one is passion. Uh, you know, for us, uh, having um, a well thought off deck really makes a big difference. Something that is nicely designed and is really optimized. So having done so many sales presentations, mm -hmm. just having having that journey of, of walking, of creating a sales deck, asking questions, making it interactive, showing case studies, right? There's so much that goes that goes into it, but, but really it comes down to having knowledge of the industry, being passionate, having sales materials, you know, i.e. A, a deck mm -hmm. uh, that is complementing your, your pitch. And then most importantly, asking the right question. So it depends on, on your sales format. You could do a one call close, or a two call close, right? We have found the two call closes work work best. So we have someone that is initially off of an inquiry, let's say it's an inbound lead. We have someone that's 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 contacting the, the prospect and is pre-qualifying them to see if it's worth, you know, putting together our, our 45 or one hour pitch mm -hmm. presentation. There's a lot of energy and that goes into these presentations. So kind of a pre-qualification call is typically about 15 minutes and mm -hmm. it just asks it just pre-qualifies the, the person, you know, do you have a real business? How long have you been in business? It asks them a series of questions, right? Um, and then that tees it up for the second call, like the decision call, we are actually delivering the presentation. So we have found for, for our price points uh, mm -hmm. and, and our industry is that kind of a two, a two call close works well. Mm -hmm. And we have found that putting together uh, a thorough uh, sales deck that complements the presentation uh, really makes a difference for us. Interesting. So I love what you said about passion. I completely agree. Oftentimes we get uh, potential clients on the phone and we get asked questions like, well, what makes you unique? What makes you different? 
And at the end of the day, an agency is an agency. I mean, there's good ones, there's bad ones, just like anything in life. You know, if, if they're talented, if they're experienced, they're going to, everybody's going to deliver results, but you're, you're spot on. It's passion. Like, that's what I always tell prospective clients. Like you can tell if who you're talking to seems authentically passionate about what you do. And if you're really looking for a differentiator, that that's the thing to look for. It's kind of hard to fake, you know, either you, you can tell if somebody's faking whether they're really excited about something or not. So that's really what to look for. So I couldn't agree more with you. You had mentioned something. Now, now I'm, now I'm going to get um, selfish here because um, I'm jealous if, if you're actually um, closing um, clients on two calls. So I'm kind of curious about, and we use a similar tactic. We, we, we have that initial call and try to get a sense of whether they're a good fit and whether, you know, we move on to kind of like a pitch proposal stage. Um, I, but it, it's very rare for us to get a yes or a no at the, at the end of that second pitch call. It's usually, you know, we go through it with them and, uh, you know, my, my approach has always been, Hey, either we're the right fit or we're not, you know, I'm not going to make you make a decision any faster than you want to. So, and that's probably an area we need to get better at is maybe just pushing to ask for the sale to kind of make that happen. So I'm just curious, what are in, in your experiences, are you getting a lot of decisions made? in that moment at, at the end of that second call pitch proposal, yes or no. And if yes, like, what do you think are the things that you do that ensure that that happens? I love this question. Uh, and, and I got a great answer for you, but again, it really comes down to like, who are these prospects and how big are your retainers, right? Mm -hmm. That makes a difference. If you're right. selling, a, uh, you know, some, some agencies, you know, are, are, are selling 2000 $1,500 retainers, right? Where ours is a lot higher than that. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have five to $13,000 sure. per month retainers, yeah. right? So of course you're doing one call closes because your product is, is only, you know, $1,500, right? right? So sure. it comes down to a lot of factors, but, on a two call close, you have to frame, you have to frame them. So at the beginning of the conversation, you'd be like, Hey, at the end of this presentation, you know, there's going to be a decision that's going to be made. And I think by that time I'll have answered all your questions, but are you comfortable at the end of the presentation for you to, this is a decision call for you to let me know whether this is something you really are able to do. Uh, and, and are, are, you know, are you able to give me an answer on that? So you're framing that from the very beginning, but it has to be done strategically. It can't mm -hmm. be forced, you know, it, you have to have confidence in it. Right. And so it, it, it boils down to the prospect, uh, you know, where the prospect is coming from and what they've seen before, how indoctrinated mm -hmm. they are. Most of the time they're already going to be excited to already get on the phone with you because they need marketing services. Right. And so they're coming. They're coming to an agency because they need leads, they need sales, they need help with branding, whatever it is, yeah. right? So at the end of the day, you have to frame that question and you have to ask them like, hey, uh, obviously you have to make sure you're speaking to the right person, right? Mm -hmm. The decision maker, of course, that's, yep. you know, sales 101, right? You don't want to pitch a you know, person that is not a decision maker. So there's a couple steps to do, but I found that framing it from the beginning and asking strategically and politely and saying, hey, at the end of this call, uh, whether it's a yes or no, and if it's a no, that's perfectly fine. I just want this to be a decision call. Is that something that you agree to and something that you're comfortable with? Hmm. Now, do you do that on what you just said? Do you do that on the first call saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this thing. We're going to put this together for you. But our, ex you know, and our expectation, like, it's a lot of work and we think we're going to give you what you need to make a good decision. Do you think yes. you're going to be ready to have, do you, ha do you de deal yeah. with it there? And if they we say like, if they say no, I don't, I mean, is that where you're a little hesitant to kind of go down that you know that far with them if they're kind of waffling on that exactly you're, you're framing it from even the first call right? right you're framing it from the first call and then you're framing it again right mm -hmm. and so one thing i want to add is is you know again where's this person coming from is this mm -hmm. an inbound is it an outbound what do they know about the company so far was it a referral so there's a lot that goes into it but one of the 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 really the key pieces here and getting high conversions for agency sales is social proof mm -hmm. right so if you have videos in your presentation you have videos on your website if the customers already seen them before they're going to be more excited right. to speak to you and to make a decision some of these people are going to be pre-sold already I've, I've had conversations with customers that says you don't even need to finish i'm ready to go because they had done their homework right sure. and then i've had conversations with others that they, they may need a, a third call or even a fourth call. Like, of yeah. course, not all of our sales are closed on two calls. Mm -hmm. uh, vast majority are at yeah. our retainer levels right now. Yeah. But, you know, it's common. People, are, people are, are wired differently. People need more info. They need to take a little bit more time and whatnot. But if 
you have that social proof. Mm -hmm. And the best social proof to have for an agency is a video testimonial, yeah. right? And we have some great ones, people that are sharing their heart and their story, right? And you can tell when they're authentic videos yeah. because nowadays, you know, in the online marketing world, there are lots of people that are fake testimonials, especially yeah. if they're text ones. It's like, oh, well, like, how do I know, right? You know, so, so video testimonials are king when it comes to social proof. And if, and if that's a prospect that, that if it's a niche that you're specializing in and if that person knows some of the clients that you worked with and those clients say are raving about you that's going to really help help this conversion process so there's so many different factors that go into sealing clients for agencies but that stuff really helps yeah no that's a great point we uh so we've used like clutch and gotten a lot of i, I always thought it was a heavy lift to get a client to spend 15 minutes with clutch to be interviewed and do reviews there but it sounds like you're saying you're actually um, having clients provide video, like video of them talking about their experiences with you. How are you facilitating those? Are you just saying, hey, can you video yourself talking? Like, how do you set that? How do you get them to kind of to do that? Yeah. So there are questions to, uh, that you can that you can ask, but you have to be very careful with that, yeah. because if, if a customer is just reading it, I started I started working with this company and this like it's yeah. you're not going to get the best testimonial. Right. So, I mean, it depends. It's kind of a case by case basis. Uh, let's say we're doing webinar funnels, then we are already coaching our clients through, uh, you know, how to be engaging and tonality mm -hmm. and, you know, how to deliver a good video and, and media like general media training. So that the, our, our clients are now comfortable with recording mm -hmm. videos because we've coached them on that. And so they're comfortable. It's not going to be scary for them to record, you know, uh, you know, three, four minute video. Right. Sure. So you don't want to be too long. Right, a 15 minute testimony, that's probably, that's a very, very yeah. long detailed case study. People are right. probably not gonna watch that unless it's a hell of a story, mm -hmm. right? And you don't want it to be too short. I had a great experience with this company. They are amazing. No, that's a terrible <laughs> testimonial. So the key is getting these really good two, three minute, you know, testimonials yeah. where they're just sharing authentically. They're sharing what, what, what was their issue before they started mm -hmm. working with you, right? So yeah. what was it before, right? And what is it now, right? And what were, you know what's been happening and as a result of what what that company is doing what changed you know so that's that's how you're able to really get the best type of testimonials yeah. so i used to do this and you know we have a great company we have a great service but i realized i didn't have enough leads or i was i was doing my sales process one to one and i needed to do one to many and that's how i learned about need clients now right yeah. uh and so so those are the best testimonials and then they share like now i'm able to do this this and this so yeah. Those are the best types of, uh, of social proof you can have. And if you have that, if you sprinkle that on, on your website and on your sales presentations, yeah. it's just, it's, it's going to be your best friend. That's going to help you seal these deals. That's awesome. That's great stuff. What a uh, couple more questions. What, uh, when you think of back on your agency journey, if you can kind of go back and do something differently, um, you know, I think there's always a great question for up and comers. Um, you know, if, if there's something you can go back, do it differently, change it up. Um, what would that have been? Gosh, I mentioned this a couple minutes ago, but man, our really our our biggest mistake is just saying yes to everything. Yep. You know, especially in the first mm -hmm. couple of years. Oh, can you do a video? Can you do this? Can you do mm -hmm. content marketing? And it's like yes, yes, yes. So being a yes man in agency yeah. is the worst, the worst thing you can do. So yeah. that's number one. And number two, really, there are riches in the niches, as they yeah. say. You know, so the reason why we're closing deals now is because we know so much about an industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there, there's no, uh, you know, there's no question, you know, with that. So really when you focus on just a handful or one niche, mm -hmm. you, you're going to become to the go-to expert in that respective niche. So those are the, really the two big things that if I was able to go back in time and, and, you know, and fix that, that'd be the first thing that I do. And then lastly, Really, what it comes down to is, uh, uh, you know, coming up with a service that's going to get results, right? And that's why that's why we build and offer a done for you funnel service mm -hmm. because funnels, if done correctly, you're going to be your clients going to be getting results and they're going to get results very quickly, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not knocking other marketing services; they all work well and they serve their purpose and SEO and content and blogging, right? They're all amazing and they serve its purpose. But what I have found you know, and, and, and the years that I've been in business as clients, 
they want results quickly. They want results now. They want results yesterday, right? So yeah. having to frame the client and be like, hey, this can take a couple months to for you to actually get some engagement and so forth. I found that clients don't really have the patience mm -hmm. or, or want to want to really wait long in order for them to see results. And that's how we decided to, to focus entirely on funnels because within 45 days, we can we can launch a funnel, we can run traffic to it, and the client at that phase is gonna already start having leads and conversations and clients and is already gonna start seeing returns on their investment. Mm -hmm. And and that's really what's worked well for us and, and the funnel services that we're offering now at Need Clients Now. Awesome, no, I love it. And um, I always ask everybody this, what's your, uh, what's your favorite app, website, gadget, book, something that really has stood out to you recently that, uh, that you would recommend? Gosh, so many, man. Our tech stack, our tech stack is is pretty big. A really cool one that we've been adapting. We started really adapting it last year. Is like video email, mm -hmm. right? So we use a tool called Bonjoro. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's if you have a, a high a high ticket client, right? And it's going to be worth your time for you to record a video and say, Hey, I had a great conversation with you. I'm really looking for our next call. If it's going to be worth it for you to spend a little more time providing a little more care to that prospect and showing them that, you know, your, your level of excitement, uh, you know, tools like that, you know, video mm -hmm. emails, you know, I guess what it's referred to, it's really cool because it's still pretty new and any, you know, lots of times when you can show these clients like new tools and features, it kind of gets them excited right uh, mm -hmm. uh because they're unfamiliar with you know like ringless voicemails they have no clue what that is no clue how it works video emails and that type of stuff and so i'd say bonjoro is a really cool tool i recommend and then two loom man i love loom and i've been a loom user for 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 quite some time when they first started mm -hmm. uh and it's just great like it's uh, it works well and you, you screenshot things and so one of the things we've started doing in our agency is doing these like weekly uh, video recaps. So, hey, this is what the team has been working on this week. And then you're showing exactly what the team is working on, right? And it just gives the, the client confidence that mm -hmm. you're still delivering and working for them, even though if you don't have a meeting this week or update call with them. And so I'd say Bonjoro and Loom for the win. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah, we use, we've been using Loom a lot too. So uh, love it, good stuff, man. I uh, really enjoyed this, really awesome stuff. I learned a ton, and if I learned a ton, then that means this is probably going to be a pretty good episode. So, I really, uh, really appreciate you uh, sharing your insights. Um, what uh, is there anything that I didn't ask you that uh, you feel might be important to share with the audience before we wrap up? I, I, you know, I think we covered a lot, and I, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity. Really, what it comes down to is, regardless of what service and what industry and and so forth, you know, learn, uh, uh, learn about sales funnels and learn what is the best type of funnel for your business. It, it can make a significant difference. And that's what we do day in and day out is make differences in our clients' lives. So, so learn about the power of a funnel uh, and see how you can adapt it to your specific business. Uh, you know, and if there's any questions, people can contact me. Uh, you know, our website is needclientsnow.com. Uh, you can email me at Elias, E-L-I-S, at needclientsnow.com. And I'm pretty available and accessible through Instagram and Facebook and uh, Clubhouse and all the other things. <laughs> awesome. Well, Elias, thank you so much for uh, carving out some time today. I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you and certainly somebody that I plan on uh, keeping my eyes on because, like I said, learned a lot to, from our conversation. So. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much, Jason. Awesome. That does it for this episode of Socialistics. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll catch you next time.